Our attitude towards the land has changed over the years. The early settlers came in and cleared much of the country, leaving it sparse and susceptible to erosion. Erosion is now a major problem, and the related oversalination of soil has destroyed many acres of land. A new innovation in rural areas is to form groups to address certain local problems, such as erosion and salinity, and to work as a group to solve these problems. Traditionally, work undertaken by landholders with regard to land protection came about by means of staff from the government agencies working on a one-to-one -one basis with them, and only when an approach was made. Often when a problem was well into a critical situation. For many, going into government offices was a difficult thing. Well, I didn't have a great deal of faith in the political side of it and the academic side of things. We didn't cooperate with our uh, d different departments. But I'm very amazed and pleased that farmers have, this last three or four years, they've come in magnificently. It was rare to see landholders working in groups to address a problem, and where there were groups, they'd been initiated by government agency staff. However, in recent years, a new approach is emerging in the area of land protection, and it is the landholders who are getting themselves into groups to address problems, and are taking the initiative in organising their affairs. Well, some people would prefer to work on their own, but I think it does help to work to, together on a big, big um, lot. I've always been interested in, in planting trees and, and getting our property, um, get the grassing down of the land and the salinity, but the group's given us the encouragement to go further. But just the actual group and the ideas from the other people in the group and my ideas to the group, it's been good for me. Well, working in a group um, gives you the feeling that you're not on your own, that you have other people who share the same problems as you and that you can get together and talk about it and uh, solve problems together rather than hacking away by yourself on a hill. Having a neighbour who's got problems and is going about fixing those problems is inspiring and encouraging you to do the same thing. You can see the results that he's getting. In concert with this is the involvement of government agency staff at the request of landholders. And to have lasting results, both parties need to be closely associated. The group owning their involvement and taking responsibility for their actions. To support this, is the technical know-how and encouragement of departmental staff. From a government department point of view, there's a vital role for groups in whatever message we're selling, whether it's land protection or anything else. I can see some distinct benefits for us in working through groups because I think that rather than working on the one-to-one -one basis when the departments have been seen to be the, the source of all wisdom and the promoter of everything, we're really acknowledging that the, the groups are uh, setting their own pace, they're defining where they want to go and how they want to go about it. And I think in the end we achieve far more because the, the group provides pressure on each other, provides that backup support and really, really develops the enthusiasm that you need for anything to happen. One such group which has been successful in this approach is the Warren Bain Boho Land Protection Group, who are based in North East Victoria. This is a story about their model for action. Originating from an approach by a few landholders to the district office and with assistance from enthusiastic extension officers with conservation forests and lands, the group has grown over several years from an idea to now being an incorporated group with 150 landholders in the project area, which covers 25,000 hectares. The land included lies in two adjoining local government municipalities. The focus of the group's emergence was the matter of dry land salinity which was increasing at an alarming rate. But their model for action has a message for all who wish to be involved in community development through group activities. We could see something had to be done quick because the, the country was getting just getting worse every year and um, the stock was just deteriorating at all from being down on it all the time. And um, So uh, we thought it was action and then when, the, when this National Soil Conservation uh, thing came up, we uh, we really got into it. Mm. And from then on we've been doing nothing else nearly ever since. Following a written request from six interested landholders to the relevant government department seeking the information of a group conservation area, a public meeting was convened to gauge interest in a cooperative soil conservation project and to elect a local committee to represent landholders in the proposed project area. The meeting discussed the extent 
severity and mechanisms of dryland salinity in the district. And an explanation was given by departmental staff as to the function of cooperative soil conservation projects. The landholders who attended supported the formation of a conservation project. They elected their committee and requested that a planning report be drawn up by the department. The main objective of the project was to implement land management changes so that land degradation was prevented and controlled and at the same time to develop associated strategies to improve the profitability of present farm practices. So that each of them are going At a subsequent public meeting, the planning report was adopted the and the group activities began. The challenge had begun. Certainly some risks had to be taken, but the rewards of such involvement unfolded over the subsequent years. It's much better if, if there's a group of landholders, uh, you know, four or five in a group who have got a common problem with rabbits and that they actually get together and try and work out a program. Uh, so that each of them are going and poisoning or fumigating or ripping all at the same time. It, it just makes the rabbit problem so much better. The success of the group was to hinge on the commitment of landholders to initiate on-ground works. Well, initially the role of the group, I, I believe, should be to take responsibility for running the day-to-day, the year-to-year -day, the, the -year activities of the group in terms of running field days themselves, public meetings, um, farm walks, those sort of forums. And the group also needs to and is able to take responsibility for planning the future direction of what's going to happen in, in their project. It was also going to take a great deal of dedication and enthusiasm to keep both the committee stimulated to work on towards landholder involvement and the balance between the committee's work and keeping the communication lines open with all landholders. This was to become a crucial part of the group succeeding where others had failed. Most landholders uh, don't really see a problem in their locality. But usually, um, if there is a problem, a few uh, individuals really get excited about it and motivated about it, and they tend to be the ones that uh, develop action. Uh, they are the people who call landholder meetings, uh, and usually they're the people who end up on the on the initial steering committee, and. Uh, they're there because they want to see action and they are committed. During the developing phase of the group, the state government was conducting a public hearing on salinity. The committee prepared a submission to the hearing. Although writing a submission was not a thing any member had done before, all members actively took part in assisting with the content. And at a later stage, a couple of them took on the responsibility of combining all the ideas and producing the documented submission. The total participation of the group was to be, and still is, a most valuable, necessary and rewarding aspect of the committee's work. Think tank meetings outside normal business meetings have been the way the committee have worked on all group activities, and the way all submissions for funding have been produced. Activities are run during the year for landholders to encourage and increase interest in the project. These range from small groups of landholders meeting on a farm in their corner of the project area to large field days which are run for the whole area and which are advertised in the local press and on radio. It is felt that if there is a land related topic which is being addressed by speakers then it is better for as many people as possible to benefit from the arranged activity. Night meetings are also held which allow all those who are employed outside their properties in off farm income situations to avail themselves of group activities. As the group's activities grew and more landholders wished to develop farm plans, the group saw the need to employ a coordinator as a priority. Following a successful application to the National Soil Conservation Program for funding, an appointment was made. A new burst of enthusiasm for on-ground works followed, and the coordinator became a vital link between the landholders and government agency staff. In, in my capacity as coordinator with this group, um, I've carried out the group's instructions in terms of preparing farm plans for individual landholders, and this initially is, is a very useful extension tool. It also has enabled us to, to plan with individual landholders between the farmer and the, and the Department of Conservation, Forests and Lands, the sort of works that, which might take place over the next three, five, 10 years.
As greater awareness was drawn to what was happening with group activities, landholders not involved were critical of the attention being drawn to their district regarding degraded land. But it brought rewards to those who were involved. I was fairly shy. I never ever could speak very much to a crowd and uh, when this started off it was pretty scaring with uh, you know, up to a hundred people coming here to the sites and having to tell, you know, it was very nerve-wracking to try and tell them what I'd done because, uh, <laughs> you know, everything was new to me. But it brought rewards to those who were involved. Interest from departmental staff, neighbouring landholder groups, government ministers and the media supported and rewarded those involved for their positive action. To have uh, a person that's uh, and a group that are close by that you can sort of pick their brains as, as you might say uh, has been terrific benefit to the Moliula Taton group especially somebody that has a coordinator and a, a committee that's willing to help somebody else uh, Terrific. As an extension officer I've been um, able to get my message across a lot easier. With farmer talking to farmer over the, the fence have been our best advocates for our work. The Land Protection Group sees education as a key to creating a greater awareness of the environment. To this end the group sought outside funding to employ a rural urban development officer. Regular visits are made to local schools, where children are involved in projects dealing with problems such as salinity and soil erosion, along with a tree planting awareness program. The group sees its work as ongoing, with all the challenges, risks and rewards such positive action can bring. I think one of the things that we're trying to do here is look at all sorts of aspects of land protection and land management and I think the land management is one of the most important things that we've developed and can see that beyond the initial stages that we were involved in that really it's a matter now of looking at a total catchment management plan and that of course naturally includes probably our next closest group here would be after landholders and government agencies we're probably talking about local government. We are keen to get on with things we don't really want to see this as just a time when the, it's at a whim of a government or that uh, one government's more supportive than another. We see ourselves as really sustaining doing what we're doing and I think that all parties concerned in government circles certainly see that it is something they're all going to have to be involved in. Now on once bare hillsides can be seen patches of young saplings that will one day provide shelter for stock and assist in preventing erosion. The trees are only small now, but they're growing and landholders do not expect an immediate payoff. This is a plan to restore the ecological balance so that ours and future generations will have land that is fertile and productive.